Hello again, everybody. Um, sticking with the topic of fuel and system fuel injectors. Um, now we're going to discuss about the fuel injectors. Now, before we get to that, here's the here's the inside of your engine, the cylinder. So now, on one side you have an intake valve. On the other side you have the fuel fuel injector. Over here you have the intake manifold where what? What the air is going to be coming in. So when the piston is going on its downward motion, it's, there's a vacuum. That vacuum will suck in all the air. A vacuum, like a vacuum pump. So now, this valve called the intake valve, during the intake stroke, the piston goes down. This valve opens. Now, from the picture, from the pictorial, how do you see that it's open? It's a little hard to understand. <clears throat> At the rest position, this is the way I tried to explain it. At the rest position, you see these? This, this. This is in contact with this. It's up here. So therefore, when that is in that rest position, it's closed. Nothing is going down. As soon as this is pushed down by the camshaft, push rods and the camshaft are pushing it down there is an opening you see this opening the space that's enough to let fuel go in and air come in together that's why they call it the air fuel ratio so air is coming in fuel is being sprayed by the fuel injector so this is coming down right we need air we need fuel we need compression we need a spark Let's look a little close at a fuel injector. Now, fuel injector has an electrical connector. Let's take a closer look. The book shows you uh, much better. <clears throat> now, whenever you see this, this is a fuel injector and this is a fuel injector. Liquid, as you see, is goes in here. Liquid form. But that's not enough. <clears throat> we need... An electrical connection to it so as you see over here how many do you see here you see two connectors two terminals that means one will be plus that means one will be B plus or 12 volts <clears throat> whichever the other one will be a control a control from where from the computer the computer will control by giving this a ground computer so one 12 volts, one computer. The computer will control. And what do you think the computer is going to control? How often this is open. After all, it is electrical. So the liquid fuel comes in. <clears throat> the spray that comes out, it's called the mist that comes out, as you can see the book describes, could be in a single spray or it can be dual spray. What does dual mean? Dual means two. You could have two sprays coming out two mists coming out it's like when you have that uh, Lysol or whatever and you press the button you have a mist coming out this is what we're referring to <clears throat> so think of what think of the fuel injector as a valve or a faucet that's the best way I can describe it the faucet opens this is the faucet in your kitchen you turn the handle what's going to happen water comes out the same way the computer will open the handle for you when the computer will turn the handle for you water will come out but instead of water we're gonna have what we're gonna have the mist come out the fuel will come out and being compressed so the computer is doing it for you electronically how much how often it will computer keep this open to allow water come out or obviously now a topic uh, uh fuel come out as much as it's needed to, according to the sensors that give them the input. It might be longer, might be shorter. When is it going to be longer? If he has to richen up the air-fuel ratio, rich means add more fuel. He'll, let, he'll leave it on longer. If he, le if he needs to lean it out, means less fuel, what do you think he'll do? He'll close it sooner. So, more water... Or less water more fuel or less fuel what does it depend on depends on the air fuel ratio let's take a look at the air fuel ratio and you'll understand a little better here it is a little better the fuel injector remember the o-ring here and here remember 
Remember those. How many have I seen without O-rings? Very important to have the O-ring here, O-ring here. Remember. And make sure they are in proper condition. Otherwise, you have to change them. Now, <clears throat> let's go to air-fuel ratio. Now, air-fuel ratio. How can I explain it the simplest way? That in, a, in, a, in a computerized fuel injection system, one is referring to air. The other one is referring to fuel. Fuel. Air. You can think of this as, we call it 10 parts air to one part fuel. Or 10 pounds air, one pound fuel. <clears throat> so, what are we aiming for? The computer is aiming for 14.7 pounds to one pound fuel. Okay? That's what the computer is programmed to adjust the air fuel ratio. And what is it going to adjust? The fuel injector that we just spoke about. It's going to adjust that either for more fuel or less fuel. Like we talked about the force in your kitchen, more water or less water. If I'm, wa if I'm washing the dishes, I need more water. If I'm done washing the dishes, what happens? I need less water. Okay? Now, <clears throat> bring that relationship to this. So, a beginner can understand what this concept is. We're aiming for 14.1. Let's round it off to 15 pounds to one pound, okay? Anywhere going up, as this number goes down, the air pounds go down, what happens? We're getting richer because we're getting closer to the air fuel ratio <clears throat> becoming richer. So f if, we're going to, if we're going from 15 to 1, 10 to 1, that's 10 pounds to 1 pound. If we're getting to 5 pounds to 1 pound, we're getting closer to the rich condition. We're, get, we're enriching it up. We're enriching it, okay? That means more fuel. What happens if you go the other direction? Let's say instead of 10 to 1, we go 15 to 1, 17 to 1, 20 to 1. We're making lean condition meaning more air or less fuel we were aiming for we said we're aiming instead of 14 points so let's round it off for this 15 to 1 why do we need this number why because we want the air fuel ratio to be this air this ratio because that's the best ratio that we can control just like the computer would control this ratio either rich or lean, more gas, less gas. It's, the computer is not stepping on the fuel pedal to give more gas. How does it do it? We just spoke about the fuel injector. It will give more gas or less gas. It will step on the pedal, the gas pedal, and it will take its foot off the gas pedal. That's how the computer does it. Why? Because the catalytic converter, that component, is a crucial, crucial component, part in cleaning out the pollutants. Why? So we can pass inspection. You have to have proper carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxygen of, of nitrogen, hydrocarbons, which is in fuel when it's rich. All these things have to be in the right statistics, let's say, so that you can pass inspection. If it's not, if one of them is high or out of, out of the reference or the parameter, then you cannot pass inspection. So we said, or the engineers said, we like 14.7 pounds air to one pound fuel. Okay? As you see, and you're going to see in this video right here, if this is the fuel injector, okay, fuel in, who has the control? We just said who? Computer. What? Which computer? The BCM, the PCM, the ECU, the main computer. The main computer, the PCM, ECU, ECM, doesn't matter how you call it or which make and model of the car. The idea is the same. Computer will have control to open or, clo or close our fuel injector. Remember, more water, less water. More fuel, less fuel. Why? Because we want that piston, right? When it goes up, we want it to compress that air-fuel ratio, Right, increase the temperature, increase the pressure, and boy, and then the spark comes in. What do you have? Like an explosion. Okay, remember those temperatures in those cylinders could go up over thousand degrees. So that spark comes in. Doesn't take too much to force that piston down to do its job.
Now, <clears throat> if, we can, if we can represent this as a signal, meaning cold start, let's say <clears throat> we're in a cold start, we're in January, we're located in... And I always like Green Bay, Wisconsin. That's where the Packers play. So, <clears throat> here we go over here. If we can show this as a signal, right? From here to here is a signal. 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 What? Look at a cold startup. What do we mean by cold? That means, again, you're taking your child to school. Or you're going to, oh, you're going to work, whatever. You're starting the car up in January, right? Or in Chicago, which I like also, right? Off of that uh, 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 very cold uh, uh, um, Lake Erie and all that, uh, Cleveland, that, that engine is, is cold. Cold start, what do you think the computer is going to tell the fuel injector to do? He's going to tell him more fuel, more fuel. Why? Because it'll take longer for your car to warm up. And how do you know this? How do you know this? You look at the RPM. The RPM will be at, let's say, 1,000 or 1,100 RPM high. But in the summer, that RPM might be also 1,000 or 900, but it'll go down quickly, not in the winter. It'll take time for that RPM, that engine, until it gets warm. Look at the coolant temperature gauge. It takes a long time for it to get to normal operating temperature. And what do I mean by normal operating temperature in your gauge? This is the gauge for coolant. Once in the middle, that, that's I call normal operating, around 190 or something like that, 200. That's normal operating temperature. It'll take a while for that. How do we represent this electronically so a beginner from school can understand? That's what I'm trying to accomplish. A pulse. From here to here is the on time. On time meaning the computer is turning this on, letting more water go in so you can wash your dishes. So here's the on time, as you can see, pretty long. What do you see from here? Compare this to this, it's getting shorter. What do you see now? It's getting shorter than this and even this. What do you see now? This pulse here to here is quite different from this one that we started out with in the cold, cold condition. Why? But it, it decreased. Look at the look from here to here. Why did it decrease? Because the, the, the temperature, the coolant temperature gauge or the coolant temperature sensor is saying it's it's getting hot in the engine. The coolant is getting hot, therefore the engine is getting hot. Therefore what? Let's close the cool the, the fuel injector or let's let let's leave it a little less open. We need fuel but not that much. And we measure in milliseconds. So the computer has control over this, has control over the fuel injector. Why? Because if you are in a cold start or you're in a hot start. If you just went to the grocery store, you warmed up your car, a fuel injector car, you warmed it up. How long do you have to warm it up? I usually wait for the pointer to move at least that much. So here's the pointer. Here's the pointer right here. I wait for it at least to move up a little. Not normal operating temperature, but at least to at least for it to wait to uh, move a little somehow. So now, so now you just went to the grocery store. It's warm. You were there for ten minutes. You came out. You started the car again. What do you think the fuel, the 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 pulse width would be? You think it'll be like this? No, it'll be more like this because you know why? You're already warm. The engine is still warm. You all you were only in the grocery store for fifteen minutes, right? So it'll get quicker to warm it up. So I hope this helped the beginners, which I'm trying to aim for right now because I got the messages from them. They're a little saying it's a little too technical, the topics I go over and the equipment. So I'm trying to bring it down to a much easier level that, like I said, somebody going to school uh, will understand. It's hard to balance it out. It's sometimes too technical, it's too hard, sometimes it's too simple. I try to balance it out. Tough topic. But go to my, uh, my uh, channel. Joe on the Charles Schematics Forum, where you, where you will see about printed circuit boards, about other things, about hands-on and things like that with oscilloscopes. And if you like this channel, please, can you subscribe? Thank you.